This is the 2022 Sangyong Musso. We've got the XLV Ultimate, which is effectively top of the range for this Korean four-wheel drive ute. Now there's one word you're going to be hearing quite regularly in this review, and it's the word surprise. This thing surprised me a lot in mostly very good ways, because this is actually a great ute from a brand that you might not be considering, but I'm going to tell you, you probably should. Let's get into the review. The Sangyong Musso range is priced from $35,790 for an ELX specification with a manual transmission, but our test model is the Ultimate XLV Auto, which is priced from $43,590 drive away. Ultimate spec adds more technology and creature comforts for the Musso, while XLV refers to the long wheelbase variant. It's 314 mils longer overall and it sits on a wheelbase that is 110 mils longer as well. This spec also gets an increased GVM, which yields an 880 kilo payload. The only option we don't have ticked is the luxury pack, and that adds dual zone climate control, electric leather seats, heated rear seats, and a sunroof, and that all costs $3,000. The Sangyong Musso uses a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel, which makes 133 kilowatts and 420 newton meters, and that runs through a six speed automatic transmission with a part time four wheel drive system. The first thing to talk about with the interior of this Musso is just the size of it overall. It does feel a little bit wider and a bit more spacious than your average dual cab ute, and that helps in terms of just general comfort and usability from day to day, I think. In terms of technology, it's not too bad. That's a part of the world that's moving forward so quickly these days. The infotainment display isn't necessarily that big. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also digital radio, no native navigation, however, and you've got a bunch of buttons down here, plus a volume knob, and it's fairly easy to use, but it's definitely not the most sophisticated out there. Below here, you've got your regular climate controls here, and something you don't see very often in a dual cab ute, regardless of price, is ventilation on the seat. So we've got heated and vented seats up, up front here. That's pretty nice to have, although they are manually adjustable, so no electric. That is a little bit of a funny mixture there of specifications. Two cup holders here up front, a decent sized center console there, and in terms of power outlets, my phone is a little bit of a mess, but you've got two 12 volt power outlets there, two USB points, and an actual cigarette lighter. That's a little bit of a rarity these days as well. In terms of materials and that sort of thing, it's all nice. The steering wheel is nicely wrapped. You've got a few nice details around the place. And in terms of value for money, this really doesn't put much of a foot wrong. Here's the second row of the Musso, and we've got decent legroom here. Not massive, but pretty good for the segment. And headroom, well, there's a lot of that, as you can see. I could probably wear a 10-gallon hat in the back here and still be okay. Seat comfort is good. We've got a little bit of rake in this backrest here, and it does feel pretty comfortable. I like to see air vent in the back of a four-wheel drive ute. We've got a drop-down armrest there with a couple of cup holders, and this, to be honest with you, works quite well. The tub of the Musso XLV is big. It measures in at over 1600 mils for length and width, and there's 1140 mils available in between the wheel arches. And the height of the load space is impressive as well. That's 578 mils tall. The surprises continue when you drive this Musso because it might be a challenger brand in the segment. It might be one of the least expensive options in the segment, but it doesn't drive like one. Number one, it's very quiet and refined. There's a lot of sound deadening obviously going on here and it's actually one of the quieter utes in the segment. And it's also refined in terms of just the way it steers and drives and rides and that sort of thing. This Musso does have a suspension setup that is Australian developed. It's made by a company called Ironman 4x4. They're a well-known aftermarket four-wheel drive parts and suspension supplier. And they've gone and tuned and recalibrated the suspension in this and they've fitted uh, coil springs and dampers of, a, of their own setup. And it has taken away a little bit of that softness that the Musso originally had before this suspension went on. It's there for better off-road performance, better loaded performance as well, and it does firm things up slightly. However, it's got to be said, this thing still drives very, very nicely for a four-wheel drive ute. The 2.2 litre turbo diesel is a solid performer in this Musso as well. It's definitely not 
anything like the most powerful in the segment, but it does a perfectly fine job of getting this car along. It's matched to a six-speed automatic transmission, and that's made by a company called Azen. That is a company owned by Toyota, and you'll know it because that's the same gearbox behind a Toyota Hilux, also in a Mazda BT50 and an Isuzu D-Max. So it's a gearbox that gets around a fair bit. It's well sorted, it's proven, and it's a nice performer on the road. It doesn't make any weird decisions. And it makes for an experience overall that is very nice to drive around town on the highway and that sort of thing. This Musso really doesn't put a foot wrong and it's really surprising how good this is as a ute. So it's spacious, it's comfortable, it's refined, it's nice to drive actually and it's got great value for money and a good warranty to back it up as well. So that's a lot of stuff in the positive column for this Musso. In terms of the negative, well, the safety isn't very good and that's probably not going to get better in the near future and maybe it's from a brand that people might not consider but I'm going to tell you that you probably should be considering it because you might be surprised at how good this ute is just like I was. As always please let me know in the comments below what you think about this Musso, what you think about the video and if you have any questions at all about the new car scene in Australia. I will do my best to get back to all of them. I do read all of the comments including those mean ones. They do make me a little bit sad but that's all right. I'll read them all and I'll try and get back to you and leave us a thumbs up for this video and if you want to read the full review head to drive.com.au.